Damn it. Sorry. Zoe took off after a bunch of deer. Um, my microphone last night was just, that was terrible. That was unbelievable bad. I've never seen that before. And I'm assuming it's because I put a um, extra foam on this and that's you know, how digital works. So I turned up the gain. And so if that starts crackling, let me know and I'll take that off. And I won't do that no more. But the idea was, um, right, you don't get as much wind when I'm talking. Right, because if I'd done that before, you know what it was like. It was brutal. Um, hang on. i got to get over it. Did I end that? Okay. Yeah, I just barely made it back in time. But that's the dog for you. It's a dog's world, right? Take me a second to get the comments to come up. Uh, but I did take a screen capture. So let me run down that one right quick for us. Hi, Sylvia. See you later, Europrop. Hi, Char. You're booty dancing. <laughs> I don't see no video, so I don't believe you. You have to debunk me now. Hi, Camshaft. Hi, Miss Milky. Hi, Magic. Which is New Rule Magic, folks. Um, hi, Jerry. Hi, Carol B. Lunar, Third Watch, Starlight, Hammer Roll B, Miss Frill, uh, Just Passing Through, JPT, Zip Free, Everett, uh, down in the UK somewhere, Baby Mama, Lorena Roll. So maybe the comments will come up now. And, wait, you know, I grabbed a comment. What, what did I grab that comment for? Oh, I don't know. Well, at least I tried tonight, right? Hopefully the comments are working here for me now. I can see. So tonight we're going to talk about low-level background, what they call low-level background radiation from this stuff. It's got nothing to do with a banana background radiation. You can have a, a city full of background radiation from bananas, and it's not going to really be a factor. But if you've got... A particle so small, it's smaller than your uh, DNA, it'll kill you of the other stuff. And that's what we talk about. We don't talk about potato background, radiation. It's got nothing to do with the stuff we're talking about. We don't talk about airplane background radiation. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Nothing. It's a completely different. It's actually benign because it's indigenous to this planet radiation. And so all life on the planet in comparison to what we're talking about, right? We're talking about man-made weaponized radiation. Um, and low levels of that, on the same count as the bananas, or as the potatoes, or as the airplanes, or as the background radiation in water, if you took those same numbers and applied them to our radiation, it'll kill you. Right? And that's the lie. That's the fable they keep doing over and over and over. It's nonstop, every day. In all the articles, you'll see it. Not every one of them, but most of them. And literally every pundit from the cable network does that. Every one of them, without fail, religiously. And they just keep going from one to the other, from banana to water, to airplane to potato, to banana to water, to airplane potato, to banana to water, which are the indigenous radiations, and we really couldn't care less about. We really couldn't, okay? Couldn't, couldn't possibly clear, care, uh, blah, blah, care less. Hi, Patrick. Sergeant, broken ass Islander, Albert, uh, Miss, Frill, Miss Frill, Gavin, Lunar, Christopher, just passing through. Nuber Magic, hey, bud. Uh, link below to his site. You can just click on his name, open in another window. A uh, really good site. Everybody should definitely subscribe. Miss Milky is here, I know. Uh, that site is so important, and her other older site is below in my links. So important. Two key players. There's a, a radiation chick, rad chick, uh, Christina Consolo is below. Um, we got Thomas Ackerman. We got Kevin Blanche. We got Patrick Henny Hendry, or Hendry pa 
Penny Pendry, which is just a pseudo name. We got Susan Doyle. Uh, that's I pronounced it wrong that time. I'm sure. We got Susan Anna from Before It's News, who has carried so many of our videos. We got um, some documentaries down below. We got an interview there with Lauren Moray and Radchick, aka also the real name is Christina Consolo. And let me see if I forgot anybody down there. We got. Uh, Andrew down there makes documentaries on Fukushima Beach, link down below. We got, you know, and I got another guy down there. Uh, he's really, it takes a lot of work to do what he's doing. Uh, don't agree with everything he says. I'm sure people don't agree with everything he always says. Can't. And you'd be foolish too if you don't check it out yourself. Then you can agree because I don't deal with, uh, I do make mistakes though. I made a mistake. I know, I know. 45 days later, and uh, caught myself. And it's a good one. I'm gonna. Sh I got pictures here. That's what I'm gonna start off to show it, so I don't forget to cover that. Cause I think that one was really important. It was a simple mistake. Yell at me later. And we got uh, Concerto Radio. Uh, his name is below, and there's a link to his latest video. And he's like me where he's using these pictures in the video, but he's on a whole different level. And he goes down a whole different level. He takes it like everybody below me, folks, are coming at you from a different angle. And Miss, Miss Milky in, in a single video will come at you at about 25 angles. Right? Both sides of it, no discrimination. Um, and so what, what more could anybody ever want? It's all down below. Is my audio better than last night? That was horrible. That was heartbreaking to listen to that today. Everybody told me. Not like you didn't warn me. I didn't know what to do. And I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I walked over and I turned up the gain on this. So I'm hoping tonight that's... Uh, I'm hoping tonight that's a lot better. So the background radiation that I'm talking about got nothing to do with bananas or water, or airplanes, or potatoes, okay? Nothing. You're worried about it, stop eating french fries. Stop it. I'm just kidding you. Yeah, Hatrick Penry. He's a wild man. They're all wild men. Thomas Ackerman, wild man. He's an artist. So every video is coming at you as an artist. He's a true artist, same as Kevin Blanche. And sometimes you can't read that into people, I had that issue. And I uh, realized after, right, that it was a serious mistake. It's unusual for me to make those types of mistakes because I don't, if you look at my music section, you'll find people from every walk of life on the planet, from all over the planet. And just half of those videos now are gone. And so those numbers are being cannibalized hard in my YouTube. Yeah, Atomic uh, Cockroach. That's, that's such an awesome song, Miss Milky. It's really straightforward, really simple, with a really catchy beat. And yeah, I made the music with a computer. Uh, but it takes talent and it takes work to pull that off. Because I go through music all the time. And so he's got some serious talent. Whether he realizes it or not, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he believes in himself. But hi, Annabeck. But uh, Tommy Cockroach... Uh, I was listening to his vocals hard before I put them in my favorite because they all go through the same scrutiny before they get in my favorite. And um, they got to have something unique about them. And that was, you know, he he understood what he was supposed to do, I think, right? And it uh, worked out wonderful, I thought. Just a great song. I hope he does well. Look, there he is, there, sir. Hi, hi, Cockroach. I always like calling you that better. But that's a great video, man. I'm glad you uh, done that. I knew we were magic. Nuber Magic says ham is a paid shill. <laughs> That's great for a fight. MS101, uh, Miss, you know, and uh, yeah, I'll come down and say hi to those. Hi, Tim. So, hypothetically speaking, an explosion where CCM 137 reaches the stratosphere can hypothetically traverse roughly 22,000 miles. Uh, at roughly 100 miles per hour in the, in the jet streams, I guess you're talking about. 
Yeah, at the, or 106 kilometers an hour at the jet streams. I just passing through. Uh, let me come down see what those. Hi, Ricky Sticky. Ricky Sticky poked up a video too, night before, where he took my voice and he put some uh, beat to it and turned it into like a little song. It was really, really. Uh, it's, it takes talent, right? Just to, l to listen to my screechy little voice over and over. Hi, baby mama. That's a job, joke, folks. I have to edit myself all the time over the years. Over the last eight years, so I got to have it doing that. My dialect and, and my, my my way of talking is, it's from this little tiny community with no automobiles for 400 years, and just you know 170 people. Um, and so you learn to talk in your own little cliches. And even though I moved away a long time ago, 25 years ago, I still can't change that. Especially I get excited. It really comes out. Baby mama. Uh, okay, I better get started here in a second. Hey, you're welcome, Atomic buddy. That's great stuff, man. You got to keep doing. Hi, freelance. <laughs> Gunderson's a paid shill. Gunderson, yeah. Well, Gunderson's... Gunderson has, uh, like, the rest of the ones that are up in the media all the time, that's the issue, is they're self-regulatory, or they don't get back up in the media. And Gunderson, I mean, he's involved in out of the 440 nuclear plants. Uh, he's worked for 70 as a uh, consultant. You can't get any more insider than that. But he's honest in the sense of a lot of the things he's saying, and he's very articulate in that sense, but, you know... I think all of them, unfortunately, are self-censored. I'm not. Neither is Nuber Magic, and neither is Miss Mulkey, neither is Radchick. Uh, neither is all, you know, uh, certainly not Blanche. Blanche is a royal man, understandably so. He doesn't believe in natural health. He believes in radiation treatment and radiation. And so, uh, um, Christina, last night, Radchick, was saying that uh, she bought uh, Danny Line tea bags. Unbelievable. She ordered them online. She put a link in that video last night. Once again, uh, sorry about the audio last night. I guess putting the extra thing over the mic, then the mic keeps cutting in and out on its own. I didn't hear it, though. But it's not doing that tonight, is it, folks? It's not cutting in and out. I've never seen anybody say anything, so. Uh, let's go on down the road to radiation. That's 12 minutes. 12 minutes of saying hi to everybody. Sometimes I'm looking all over the place like i got two eyes. So that pool you're looking at. There you go. Well, ain't that interesting, right? And you've heard me say last night, if you were able to put up with that terrible audio, that was unbelievable. Only time in 45 days it done something like that to me, but that's whatever. Well, the, the blue, right, uh, is an indication, a high indication that there's neutrons down there, which is an indication of the, the fission. There has to be a fission down there. And that would create this this um, blue. Well, I went down that road because I wanted to, to, to look at that a bit more. So I remember that picture last night. That was the one I was showing you. And you see the blue in the corner? And I made a mistake. I did. It's hard to believe it, I know. For me, it is anyway. But here's a blow-up picture of it. And see, it looks still looks like water, right? It looks like there's a reflection. It's not as empty. That pool is empty, folks. Um, and that's building four. And that, that pool is actually empty, see? And so that's why he photoshopped that picture to make it look like there was water there. Because, like, I, I worked, um, we had 120 gill nets. So I know how gill nets hang. I know how nets hang. I'm professional. I can make them from scratch, and that's what we used to do uh, 40 years ago. And 35 years ago, by the time I was 15, when I was 13, I had three boat, I had three guns, 12 gauge, 22, and a 303. I had, a, I had shell accounts for that. I had a 10 foot. Speedboat with a brand new 15 on the back of it when I was 13. I had a gas account. I had a cigarette account. I had a beer account that I would charge beer to my 17-year-old brother, and I would send my 9-year-old brother over to my speedboat to go over to the shop. We got no cars, right? 
So I would send my nine-year-old brother over to the shop to get a couple of dozen beer, charge it to my 17-year-old brother's beer account, and get cigarettes. I would charge it to him the mom's account. And uh, don't get me wrong, I couldn't drink. Right When people weren't looking, I was pouring it up behind my back, and I was giving it away as quick as... But you were innocent then, but you were still doing a man's work, 3 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon on the North Atlantic. And so at the age of 13, I was out there throwing hooks off the back of the boat on 30-foot ground swells. The boat's racing down the ground swells. You've got to start flinging these hooks off the back of the boat, and there's a hook every six feet. I don't know why I told you that story for, but... Blah. Okay, let's come back to these pictures. I don't know how I got on that story. I does that sometimes. So let's go for a little roll. Let's go for a little ride down the low level radiated it's got nothing to do with bananas right the radiation we're talking about folks just low level but the same kind of low level radiation um, so there's the pool and there's a good possibility that pool even right there is dry and that's photoshop what you're looking at there's photoshop going on there the net that's there that's how I got in that conversation that net that you can almost see there looks like a net there's hanging that's photoshop and that's not water. There's no water there. That's my opinion. And that's evident from that picture there. And there's another picture. See that picture there? That's the back. That's the back corner of this pool here, the back uh, right hand corner coming up here. Right, see down in the back right hand corner of that building. And then right down in that corner there, that's empty. Me and a friend of mine today, I got a high quality picture of that one. So we zoomed in and we were both still trying to work it out. And then both of us realized at the one time, holy shit, it's empty. And that's the same color symmetrically throughout that pool. See, right? They were taken at the same time. And so that picture, and by the way, this one, see, you don't see no net anywhere in it. Right? And um, that's the illusion, see, when you put that net in there. And then he told people it was a tarp and it was a net. That was an illusion. So I'll go on to the radiation anyway. I wanted to clarify that for people. But when you see that color in the pool, in a dirty pool, uh, or in any of these pools at these, uh, these weaponized military industrial enrichment facilities, a.k.a. power plant, which is just a byproduct of what they're doing there, um... junk there and so the radiation that's where I'm going to start off I'll leave it there so that reminds me I'll come back over for a few seconds another cup slurp of tea and then we'll cover that uh, for you folks 20 minutes I should have covered that right off the bat once again there's no hi Elizabeth uh, hi nuts for art the 90% rule that John Goffman talked about well disappeared Hang on, I'll find you. Dan, do you know about the 90% rule that John Goffman talked about? It's, I call it the 90% rule. He said the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Association, the military lie by radiation by at least 90% and deny radiation harms anyone. Yeah. Yep. I'll just come down and make sure. Hi, Tyson. For the people. Hi. Thank you. Wow. You must be educated. Time for you to start blogging. You've been following for a month. Hi, freelance. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hi, Miss Milky. Yeah, thanks, Miss Milky. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's a great one, isn't it? Because there's no net in that other picture, see? And they're taken at the same time by that remote control um, helicopter, right? That's how those pictures, folks. They got those pictures with a remote control helicopter. But that was a great, that was a great find. It's so important. And I was like, yay, I finally made a mistake. I can finally come out and apologize for making a mistake. Yeah, IAEA is the strong man, strong arm man for the nuclear. Fake colors for sure. Hi, Dominique. I always pronounce your name wrong, I know. Sue me. Just kidding. Well, let's get started then. And that's that picture you see there. I'll move back from the mic a little bit and drop my voice, if not. Okay, so i got to roll down a little tiny bit so I can see what I'm going to show you in prehand. Um... So what you can see right now is the low-level radiation that I'm going to talk about from these creatures. And we're talking about Fallujah. And we're talking about um, 
what's left over when they fire these 155 millimeter depleted uranium rounds. And they were firing around 5.5 million rounds a month, every month, for many years in Iraq. Fallujah was just one of them, folks. So this is all of Iraq. But I'm going to use Fallujah because it's such a popular story for anybody that goes in and looks it up, and this would help resonate for them. And what I want you to think about is the kids that are walking through that rubble and they're picking up forks and knives and teddy bears, school books and everything else, and, you know, cheers and, and bedding because uh, the country's in embargo land, sea, and air, and so they can't just go down to Walmart and get something from China that was dipped in formaldehyde like we can. And radiation comes after your body. Once it gets inside it, you can't detect it. You don't know it's there. And when you're walking around in this, every time you, you kick up dust or you flip something over or you pick up something, it's radiated because all the depleted uranium, which is uh, uranium-238, and it's not depleted. It's a different type, see? 98.8 out of 100 pounds is uh, yellow cake, which is the 238 to use for these weapons. And they fired 5.5 million rounds a month in Iraq every month we know about. And at least half of that came from McAllister's, which only makes depleted uraniums. The A-10 only shoots uh, uranium, and it shoots a ton and a half a minute. That's equal to around the animosity equivalent to 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation a minute. That's hell on earth. It's truly hell on earth. And let's come over here to this one. And like I say, the kids can't get away from the radiation down there anyway. Neither can the families and the moms and the dads, right? And so the radiation we're talking about all the time is smaller than your DNA, and it can actually attach itself to the DNA because it's electrically charged, right? And so uh, this is going to be hard for people to look at. Some of the pictures got coming up. I warn you right now, you might, this is hard stuff, and you have to look at it to understand it. You've got to appreciate it. You can't turn away. You just can't. You're going to face it. I've got a big collection of this stuff, and it struck me today. Low-level radiation. Dana, how do you knock that one out of the ballpark? Well, you know me. When I was challenged on how fast it took the radiation to get over here, and I said six days, and they come out and attacked me for saying it and said it was fake, well, I went and got the articles of the fire balloons from Japan in 1944, and they actually showed up in three days. So, yeah, I was wrong, all right? but not what they were employing. I was wrong. Uh, it took, I was saying twice as long, six days, for the death plumes from the death streams to come across the ocean at 100 miles an hour. Every 24 hours is 2,400 miles. And so less than three days it was here, but by three days it was interior. And the radiation from just the 238, which is left over, and it's a different type of, of, of uh, an, uh, radiation, folks, because they extract it um, 0.2% out of 100 pounds, 0.02% of 100 pounds was extracted. And what that does is it creates, a, and the bullets themselves, they're putting off x-rays. They're putting off um, all the properties, right? The betas, the gammas, and the alphas. It's not like where the radiation is flying over to here. Uh, we're not getting those big particles over here, so it's a little bit different down there. And it's a different type of radiation, right? But it's also just low radiation of these particular types of isotopes that we always talk about and that that site was full of. Uh, it's very complicated, isn't it? And there should have been another picture before that one. Hang on. Yeah, see the cats? That's in Fallujah. And you can see the kid up in the corner, in the top left-hand corner of that picture. And I, I, I wanted to come back to that for you. That's why I, I stopped and talked about it for a second. Um, now I'm going to show you some hard pictures, some harsh pictures. Uh, and it's not really the guy in the middle, but it is. Uh, that's the damage from low-level radiation you're looking at. Okay? That's what low-level does. Children are born so deformed. 80% of the children in Fallujah, 80%, folks, are like this. That's what your tax money done. 80% of it. And you can imagine... You can imagine... Um, that's just to break up the stream. And I know this is difficult for people, uh, but this is what is going to happen in your countries, in your communities. 
once these death plumes come around the coastline and settle on your coast for a couple of thousand years, you're going to start seeing all of that. Yes, indeed. That's what low-level radioactive material, once it invades your community, see the death plumes are coming across the ocean, and we got that confirmed, that's in the, the study to be below from the Canadian government. And these were snowstorms. They flew through it at 750 feet right up the coastline, and the entire coast is polluted for the last thousand days now, almost a full thousand days, because it took a few days for the plumes to get here, right in as little over a thousand days. I'm going to come over to the comments section. I'm just going to get a better picture. I'm not going to leave you on those pictures, even though I should. Uh, I just can't do that to you. I'm going to leave you on that picture. Come back to the DNA picture after. I'll come over and say hi to a few people. And that's your argument. When people say low-level radiation is not a factor, you say, tell that to the people in Fallujah. Tell that to the victims in Fallujah. Tell that to the children of Fallujah, the 80% that are born with unimaginable, well, you've seen it yourself. So when I say unimaginable, that's what I'm talking about. That's unimaginable. Now imagine trying to take care of those childs, those children. Imagine that's your child. And, you know, like, they say women shouldn't have a baby when they hit the age of 40. It's because they've been absorbing this, this um, radiation for 40 years, see? And it will cause the births that you're seeing. That will, right, will get more of that as you get older. You'll have these form births. Well, that's because you, as, a, as soon as you're born, you're attacked with radiation from all the military industrial machines experiments from all the different countries worldwide. And then all the sludge you're pouring into the ocean constantly, the 5.5 million rounds a month they're shooting the, every month in Afghan or Iraq, which is a, which is, right, so there's so much more of that forever and ever and ever for that country because you can't clean that up. You're if you find a little tiny piece of one of those bullets, 5.5 million bullets every month, you find a little piece, you're supposed to dig up six inches of the top so 900 feet around it and put up a fence, see? And I know the soldiers, some of the soldiers that were down there, and they told me, uh, they were told every day to fire 100 rounds. Every day, every soldier had to fire 100 rounds, whether he fired it into a hill, fired it into the fields, and if someone shot at you or heard a car back for you, shot every house in the neighborhood. Remember that first video of the explosions of the tanks? Every building down there is fired with depleted uranium. And so that's the real spot for you to think about what's low-level radiation going to start doing to the population. Well, Fallujah was extreme. And so you got an 80% of the babies are born are unidentifiable. And, unfor you know... The families, and it's even worse than what we're what that eighty percent, folks. And what what we know, uh, we seen what the toxins had done to Vietnam was the same kind of thing, but there was a different kind of deformity, but the exact same kind of a really terrible long term uh, hardship upon them and and their families who will try to take care of them, who will do everything they can for most of those children. They will do their best. The bond is extraordinary, particularly in those countries. That's all they got. Uh, I'll come over and say hi for a few people before I go back to that again. But that's what low-level radiation does. It annihilates the possibility of children. You can't have children after... Give it that. Give, give Iraq, say, another... If nothing else had happened, give Iraq another decade or two decades, and there won't be a woman down there who will be willing to get pregnant. Right now it's like that in Fallujah, but in all of Iraq it'll be like that in another 10 years. And it's going to be, but it's going to be like that now for all of uh, the coastlines of the Pacific in the next 10 years, if we're lucky. If the super storms don't eat up the entire coastline. And I read an article yesterday, how to come out and said, because uh, of global warming, we can expect the storms to be killers from now on for at least another 30 years. Yeah? Half-life of cesium-137, 30 years. It's going to heat up the ocean, see? That's what it does. If you heat it up, you create more... Like, if you heat up water, what's going on? All the particulates are moving faster, right? That's all that's going on. Everything in the water itself, right? The molecules of the water start moving faster. That's energy, more energy. And when you're talking about trillions and trillions and trillions of disintegrations of Beckwells from the trillium, from the cesium, from the strontium, from all the uranium family, the daughters... 
to 232, to 233, to 234, to 235, 236, 238, to 239s, from all the plutonium, the trillions and trillions and trillions, from all the rods that got blown right out into the ocean itself that are open fission, the ocean is boiling off of Fukushima. And so all these typhoons are picking up all that isotopes, not only from the land, not only from uh, that's getting sequestered into the forest. I mean, they're terrified of Japan right now with forest fires. But because all that radiation on all the, uh, the entire Pacific Ocean, the entire bloody thing in another two years will, will be full, and it's still going to be hemorrhaging out. And these storms and these clouds are not going to go away. So the lightning storms that are coming in the future are going to be extraordinary where all the clouds are going to light up. Where a uh, forest catches fire will be the most terrifying thing we can imagine on the planet because it's going to release these right now, last year, the year before. These are terrifying stuff every time there's a forest fire here in Canada or any on the Pacific Rim. I always relate to Canada because, hey, I'm on Canada, I'm right on the Pacific Ocean. I'm supposed to be over here and say hi to a few people first. Hi, Anna Beck. Um, Got to find myself a pure effect filter for Christmas. I love my clean, clean water. Mountain water. There's no such, you can't, you can't clean tap water, okay? You can't, you can't fix that. It's got chemicals pouring in it, fluorides, and uh, they might not admit it, but it's also got other stuff in it. And they do things to the water, so it's not, actually truly not even water anymore. That's one of the biggest problems we all have, whoever live in cities and where there's a lot of water, where water's ran into your home. You're not actually getting true water. It's not structured anymore. And so that's really important that people kind of look for that, what I'm talking about, look for structured water. Uh, Sergeant York says, uh, wait now, he's talking to somebody else. I'll come to you in a second, planet. Hi, freelance. Right, because people get emotional when you disagree with a cause that seems good, like supporting the troops. Yeah, they don't support the 22 veterans committing suicide every day, but they want the guy who gets blown up in Afghanistan by the Taliban. Don't even get me started. Uh, they'll run him for 24 hours, 48 hours to get people to join the military, right? Feel pity and stuff like that. Uh, but they're firing depleted uranium into those communities, and they kill those communities in every future generation. Right? It's to, it's much worse, right? And that's a war crime on the largest scale possible. But, I mean, the soldiers are... Um, there's 29,000 rapes a year in the military. They're raping each other that much. How much are they raping in the countries they're occupying? If they're raping their own, and that's a low-ball number, 29,000. That's a Pentagon number. 29,000 reported rapes every year in the military. Well, that's, that's 300,000 over a decade. 22 veterans committing suicide every day, homeless, destitute, and rejected, spit up on, on the sidewalks every day. That's 80-something uh, thousand since September 11, 2001, which is, um, you know, there's more than 10 times how many allegedly died in combat. But there's 5 million orphans in Afghanistan. There's 2 million widows in Iraq. In the last decade, 2 million to get 11,000 Taliban, 5 million orphans to get 11,000 Taliban, 29,000 rapes every year to get the same 11,000 Taliban, 22 vets committing suicide every day, 80,000 over the last decade to get 11,000 Taliban. And then we poison the entire country with depleted uranium to get that 11,000 Taliban. And they'll never go away. They were created, they were created, uh, they're a subsidiary of the Mujahideen. And they were created to overthrow um, Saddam Hussein, help overthrow him, and push the Russians out, right? And then they went in with the Gulf War. Hi, Big Now TV. Water is eugenics juice. Uh, just passing through. Uh, Annabeck. Recycle P. Yeah. Let me see if I can catch a couple of comments. He was saying hi, Miss Milky the Clown. Wow, the comments are rolling like crazy. Stopping and rolling again, speedy quick. Are we going to go past, uh, are we going to make a thousand comments tonight? That's the big question. Every day I'm like, man, the only payback I want for everything I do is a thousand comments one of these days. And that blows them all away because that actually shows up on the other uh, graphs that all the rich people are looking at. And so a thousand comments. Right now we're dominating. I noticed my video last night that I put out, 
also is still live. Now the day before that it wasn't live, the day before that it showed live all day 20 hours later, it was still showing live and a hundred and something people watching it. And so there's something else going on there because I watch all of that very carefully and that's, that's only three times I've seen it. Annabeck, the Miami Monitor, uh, let me come down and say hi to a few people before I start again. Love those chemicals, Dana. Hi, Mickey. Mass murder for the leads. Uh, yeah, the comments are going so fast I can't keep up with them. Okay, that's okay, though. I just wanted to, there was a comment there that looked really interesting. I was trying to read it, but it, it's moving so fast. I can't keep up with it, so I'll come back over. Hi, Eva. Hi, 333. Hi, Dominic. Again, I say hi. Planet X. Paul Petron offered the use of Greek device on the BP oil spill, but they wouldn't let them use it. Uh, Nuber Magic. Oh, well, well, let me see. Annabeth can't sub new, uh, nuts for art. I'm trying. Hang on. I'm going to come back over to my uh, pictures here in a second. I just want to see if I can find that comment because that had me peaked. Um, spamming with happy words. <laughs> there you go. Let's hit a thousand. Just passing through. Okay, Dana, Dana, you then better get off my ass. Let's do it. Uh, show those suits what we can do. Your video is live today as well. Yeah, thanks now, Big Now TV. Still live, is it? Wow. Okay. Awake 24 high. David MacArthur high. Baby Mama. Laurel Adams high. Uh, I'm coming back over. Moments nothing more high. Joy for Nuber Magic. Mickey, Third Watch, Anna Beck. I just want to say hi, folks. Lily Go Get That too. Thank you. There you go. Let's make it a thousand. Thank you. Um, wow. Hi, Kevin. Okay, I, folks, I can't keep up with that. I was trying. I've done my best, but 36 minutes. Okay, i got to get busy again for a bit. Here we go. So we're talking about low-level radioactive material, and how do, you, how do you smack it down, the nonsense that you keep running into? Bananas and water and ear planes. And, uh, uh, bananas, water, airplanes. Oh, and potatoes. Wait, there was another one that they always use. I'll get it in a second. And so the radiation we're talking about got nothing to do with that, okay? That's a lie. That's a fabrication. That's a misdirection. If you took the same amount of uranium count as a banana count, the uranium will kill you pretty quick. Banana will never kill you. Fill up the whole community with bananas, walk around all day in your shorts, and it still won't kill you unless you start eating them all because that many bananas probably would kill you. And then... Iraq and Afghanistan, it's not just there, it's all the other countries, it's uranium-238 that they use in the bullets, 5.5 million bullets in a month. The legacy of that is quite well known now. And uh, how it attacks the DNA and how it attacks all... Uh, I'm just looking, hang on, what have I got done there? Right, the way it, it attacks you, the molecule, uh, the nanoparticle can attach to your molecules, and then the children... The resulting children that we see born from that, it, I, and I, I have a hard time with that picture, so I'm only going to show you a couple of those pictures again to make sure anybody that's joining the stream gets a handle on what we're talking about. That's the legacy of low-level radioactive dolram, depleted uranium low-level radioactive material. And it's not low-level, low, low level. you know, if you start sucking on a uranium bullet, when you pull it out of your mouth, phew, your teeth are going to fall out. That's why all the soldiers came back from Iraq, the gunners, were sitting on the shelves in the tank, had uh, rectal cancer. And a lot of these soldiers that came back, uh, they brought back contaminants in their clothing, in their shoes, in, in their, you know, their little uh, treasures of war they brought back. And so there was a study done on 160 soldiers who had children before they went to, uh, to the Gulf War. That, this is about the Gulf War study. And when he came back, they studied 160 of them, and they all had children after. <clears throat> so they went and looked at it, and 60% of the children were born like this. 
No eyes, no nose, no mouth, no lips. Now, that's really low-level radioactive material they brought back, right? That's truly low-level that they brought back with them, and had done it to their own. And, of course, the government, you know, buries their head up their butts. And that's not a good place, because the radiation hangs out in their toe. And so you can't get away from it. But this creature is here. That's his legacy, that Iraq will never be the same. We're at war with Iraq until the end of time. It's a war crime, okay? Your tax dollars paid for that. And McAllister's bomb manufacturing facility only makes depleted uranium rounds. And once again, the A-10 Warthog that Dick Cheney fired off, had in there every day, was shooting off 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of background radiation. A Japanese physicist at a Hamburg conference had calculated that... Uh, 700 tons of depleted uranium was the animosity equivalent of 44,000 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation. And so that's how I done my math on the ton and a half that comes out of these things. It's much worse than that. It's much worse than that. Because a lot, you can't take into consideration what the 238, the result of the enrichment and the yellow cake that's left over. A lot of people really can't wrap their minds around because they call it Dolram, depleted uranium low level, well, they used to. I don't know how to get rid of the rest of that acronym, but it was depleted uranium low level radioactive material. And there's nothing low level about it, and that's what I'm saying, the resi residual effect of that. Certainly, they fired through everybody's house. You're supposed to dig up all of Iraq. You're supposed to dig up all of Afghanistan, every building on it, all the soil. Anywhere within uh, two miles that Americans ever set foot, is polluted. Every route they ever took is polluted. Every community they pass through is polluted till the end of time. And so I needed to bring that into context for people because that's what I've been at for many years, is studying up on that part of it. And so the, the Fukushima part is so important that people are able to wrap their mind around Fukushima and these plumes, right? So it says there are six days, but the Japanese, look up Wikipedia fire balloons, from Japan, 1944, and, they, and you'll see all of these places that they sent that to. There's a big list of it, actually. I got that list there. And so those fire balloons came over from Japan in, in, at 100 miles an hour in the jet streams. So three days later, they were over British Columbia. And these fire balloons were found all over Canada, all over Mexico also, of course. And so it's important that people really consider it. And like everybody in Fallujah and everybody in Iraq should look like that every day. You know? That's how they should live their life all day every day. And that's what they're going to have to do here in British Columbia. British Columbia has failed us on such a scale. Because they understood that, that's a reactor for you looking at there, they understood what, you know, what was doing. That study below in my links, right, showed that nine days after... The, the initial release of the meltdown, that uh, it was a snowstorm of radiation in updated our coastlines, all of us, and that it, it circled around and continued to spread out and then continued to come, right, and continued to spread out. And so the current, the jet streams and the currents here in British Columbia makes a circle down around Americans, and then it comes back out towards the ocean again. And so this plume is coming, a snowstorm is coming of radiation coming across the ocean of cesium, uranium, plutonium, strontiums, and their entire hideously named family trees. A snowstorm that reached right to the jet stream all the way down, right to the ocean. A snowstorm that's invisible of death. And so, once again, you know, I always try to mention about dandelion in every single video because everybody can do something like that. And dandelion has every nutrition and mineral your body needs. And the GMO enhances the cancer and it has no nutrients and it also has toxins engineered into it like the glossophates and formaldehydes. And so I always try to inform people that there's also a link below for DCA which cures cancer, reduces all tumors by 70 percent in three weeks. And the study below is an updated one and it shows where all the other peer review studies have taken place on that study, and they all came up with the same conclusion, that it reduces all tumors by 70% in three weeks. And it only costs you pennies compared to the conventional treatment. 
There's no money in cures, see? And there's no patent on that. And it's, it's an inoculus, right, the DCA. It's an inoculus, you can take it every day, it can't hurt you. Now, I've seen some of the, the crap out there claiming that it did because they're trying to scare people away. But go look at the study yourself. Go read that stuff yourself. Make up your own mind who's right near them. The people that are saying, stay away from it. Uh. No, I mean, this has been peer reviewed many times. It reduces, and you need to know that. You can buy that. You can get that at, your, at, the, min, at the health food shop. You can get that from your pharmacist. There's no patent on it. You don't need a pharmacist for it. It's healthy. It's good for you. They've used it on all kinds of people with exotic diseases. And what it does is it, it unplates your blood, right? And so cancer can't work. Cancer only works because your blood plates up, see? And it becomes inoperable. It can't deal with the cancer and it takes over rules. And this allows you to, your cells naturally to go and deal with it. And this is a fast reactor too. Three weeks, reduce your tumor by 70%. That's survival. Dandelion, dandelion itself, you can eat the flour, eat the, eat the greens, eat the root, make tea out of the whole bunch of it, or boil, put it in a pot of, of vegetables and put all that nutrition into your vegetables. But you don't want to be eating GMO. Because even if you've got a little bit of GMO there, it stops, it stops the intake of the nutrition. Now, Afghanistan is all uh, GMO seeds, right? And so they're not uptaking any nutrients. And then they got all the radiation. And so that's the extreme. But that's going to happen here because GMO is 80 to 85% of all your shelves, right? And you go look up all the studies. If you go back 45 videos or something, you'll find a two-hour video where I try to plug 400 headlines, mostly peer review studies about GMO, just as a last ditch effort. Here, come argue with that one. You might be able to argue with me a little bit here and a little bit there, but I got 400 for you, headlines, and I went for two hours. That, so that was the end of that one for me, because nobody can beat me on that one ever again. Just like no one can beat me about the balloons coming over. I'll come back over to the comment section. Um, and you can see the damage to these buildings. You can't get inside that for 100 to 1,000 years just like Chernobyl, which is only a 30% meltdown, one-third the size. And uh, was, um, this is a 100% meltdown. And this is a different type of fuel altogether. What they used in Chernobyl was graphite. It wouldn't catch fire. This stuff here catches fire because there's zirconium coatings on it, which is even more hideous. Again, releases all the noble gases. That's why you had that explosion there. And so the idea of the low-level radiation, they're saying there's only harmless background radiation, which is based upon that model there, is a two-week dispersion model. You can't dilute radiation, okay? You disperse it, you make it even worse. It's like pouring water on an oil fire. You're gonna blow that oil everywhere and it's gonna be like napalm where it's gonna stick to stuff now. Well, there's only a two-week release, see, in that model, that peer review academic study model from Germany, and that's well known that the Air News put out in Asia and that everybody in Asia understands that, but that was only a two-week small release they're based upon they never emitted about the 400 tons a day that's actually emitted that's running over those hot coriums i see them you know they're not talking about all that isotopes all the plutonium the strontium the uranium they just want to cover the cesium 137 and some of the short half-lives of iodine for eight days and blah 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 and equate it with a banana or airplane background radiation or water background radiation right those people should be slapped right in the mouth Writing them out. If I'm sat there in an interview with somebody and somebody said that to me, I would probably slap him in the mouth for it. I can't help it. There's nothing I can do about that. That's how angry I get about it. That would be an instant reflex because I got close enough to smack it. I would smack it because they're murdering people every time they say that. See? That's murder. And so that study there is off by a thousand days that you're looking at, that ocean. So they got to add another thousand days, plus, 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 right? All the releases, all the emitted releases, all the rods that went all over the site, all the rains, all the snowstorms, all the stuff that got washed out of Tokyo and Japan, all the releases. Yeah, I have a bad feeling about putting a Christmas tree. Well, it gets sequestered in your forest. So the radiation plumes will be sequestered in the trees and your plants. It's frightening. Hi, Eva. That was big now TV time, a Christmas tree. Third watch. 
So if the radiation is in your body, you can't pick it up with a Geiger counter, but you need 1,300 Geiger counters to actually pick up all the isotopes that was on that military industrial complex that has uh, power as a byproduct of it, nuclear power as a byproduct. Oh, excuse me. Hi, Nuke Boy. Nuke Born, loud noises. Was I making loud noises that time? Yeah, sorry. Dana or Miss Milky Nubaru or Missing Sky, how many Fuku fighters do you think there are that you know of worldwide? There's, there's not many. There's not a lot. A lot of people are aware of it, but it's so confusing, right? That's the whole problem. That's why I'm here each night trying to, you know, and now it's turned into where we got a crew of people but it also, it's you know just so important for anybody that's just waking up and coming on board and researching it, and to catch these live streams and they see the interactions of everybody talking. They see all the links below of all the people and how they come across with a totally different presentations all the time. I mean, look at what Miss Milky is doing there. You go watch that site for a couple of days straight, and you imagine trying to do everything in each one of those videos and organizing that, finding it, aggregating it, mixing it, rendering it in quality, in high quality. That's so hard to do. That's so time consuming. That's so much energy, so much effort. It's unimaginable. I know. I know. I got 800 videos on this site that are a lot of work. And so I know how much work it takes. Okay, I just want to say, uh, we're up to 50 minutes. It's not going to be a long one tonight because it's Sunday night again, so. In Canada, we has two Sunday nights. Last night and the night of Sunday night. Yeah, poor Hawaii. Hawaii is going to get cooked. Right, Newport? Thank you. Atomic Cockroach. James Wong. Hi, James. My name is Kay Blanche. Fuck. Look at me. Fuck, look at me. I'm so good. Fuck, I'm smart. Look at me. Well, see, what he's trying to do is he's coming out and trying to appeal. I, I know where he's coming from. He's very lucid. If you actually sit there where he's, he can't get away with stuff like that and he starts talking, he's very lucid. But that's what, he, that's what he feels. That's his only opportunity. And he's got a lot of anger and he's got a, you know, about this. And he's projecting that out there. He's looking for people to get angry. And I understand so where he's coming from, James. But, you know, we all do it differently, right? We all try to, we try. And so he has success. There are people that like that. And they're on his video all the time. And they get, they get stuff out of that, they can ignore that, or that resonates for them. And there's a lot of things there I can't really cover. I'm just passing through. Thank you. Um, there's 105 Fuki fighters on this screen. Watching and comment. Yes, they are. Uh, Roto could... Bottle all that water and sell it to the politicians as Fukushima spring water. Remember, they've been grabbing all the water out of California a few years back. Right after Fukushima, they started bringing down, I can't remember how much it was, but it's a lot. It's a lot, okay? They were towing a 15 at a time of these great big bags from California of water, towing it like a train across the ocean. Because they knew all these plumes were coming over, see? So they were getting that from the underground aquifers before they got contaminated. They knew. Hi, Jacko. Yeah, in order to get uranium, you got to kill more, you know, mountains. Also, right? So it's no different than coal in that sense, where you got to kill the mountain to get at it, and you're only using two percent, zero two point two percent of a hundred pounds, and then the rest is, is. Uh, Toxic for a billion years, minimum half-life, uranium. But even the other half-life at that stage will still kill you right away. It's so deadly. Um, and all those shells they fire in Iraq, folks, are not tipped. They're not coated. They're pure 238, uranium 238. Like the Abrams are firing 10 uh, kilograms, is it, or 10 pounds, I can't remember, of pure 238. They're not tipped and they're not coated. And as soon as they go through the air, it becomes pyroplastic where they, they're, they're, they're burning off at these high, incredible high rates of speed. And so that's releasing that, that atomized 238 into the environment immediately. And so that settles all over the waters, all contaminated, the land, all the schools, all the hospitals, all the distribution, sorry, all the distribution centers, 
Everything is contaminated. So I'll move on to that picture because I know that really... It's really rough. Um, sorry. That was the Boho Philippines on October the 15th, uh, 2013. And on October 25th, 10 days later, they had the same kind of earthquake in Japan. And the internet has been silent since then. There's been an internet blackout. There's been martial law imposed upon the Japanese, and they made it legal on Friday, right? With that censorship law. They were catching up. That's what they always do in Parliament later. And that's not a democratic democracy that does that. But um, I think that's number three reactor shedding its weight, shedding around 360,000 rod, rods. We're on the roof of that building. And uh, rods were actually in the core itself. And this was plutonium and uranium and 1,300 weaponized isotopes in order to make it uh, two million times more deadly that reactor that you see blown up there is two million times more deadly than any other reactor on the planet. And it was 100% meltdown, plus the 300,000 rods that it threw all over that site. And they buried them in with bulldozers, uh, remote-controlled dual bulldozers, before the Fukushima 50 went in there. And what else was the point I wanted to make about that? So, yeah, the, the reactor 3 just alone was... Um, 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. And I want you to think about something that's so important, that still every day bugs the daylights out of me. Uh, that's a simple way of putting it to you. Is that that Chernobyl 3828 below, that was, uh, you know, that's a documentary of the people that ran out on the roof of Chernobyl on, Mar on uh, Marsha which was they named the reactors after females, the blown ones. And so they were on the roofs around it. And so they had all that graphite out there. And that was eight to 12,000 Rankins. Two, two, 200 Rankins will kill you. And so these people should never have been out there anyway, but they were sent out for 15 to 20 seconds because Gorbachev mobilized the entire military to go deal with it. And there was a million people ran through Masha, which was um, uh, one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. One third, and it was one. It was only a thirty percent meltdown, and it was a partial meltdown. They pulled the rods out, right? So, so there's some melted fuel down there, and so because the coffee was on it for a hundred years, but the, before they can do that, they had to get all that graphite off the buildings around it, and so people ran out on the roof for fifteen to twenty seconds, then they went home, never went back on Chernobyl site ever again. Fifteen or twenty seconds, whereas in Fukushima, they're grabbing the homeless, the destitute which are the heroes that we'll never know about. And they're not getting 15 and 20 seconds and a big check and sent home. They're getting scammed and ripped off by murderers, by true murderers. These people are murdered. What are they doing next week or next month or next year? They were murdered. They shouldn't have spent any more than 15 or 20 seconds. Right now, there should have been around 6 million people on that site that got their rankings. Right? And the fact that they never done that, because they can't, the fact that they never done that means hell on earth for us. And that's why we're looking at this low-level radiation, because we have to deal with that for the rest of our life that I covered earlier in the video. And, and the Pacific Ocean itself is, is now a big fear. And that's why we're talking about the low-level radio uh, radiation tonight, radio nucleoids, because as that plume finally comes along here, there's 5,000 miles of plume behind it, and there's a new plume coming out all day, every day, out of the three melted reactors. And Building 4. But Building 4 is, was the disguise, and we covered that last night. Unfortunately, the video was terrible, the, the audio. A lot of it was good. Like, I'm really conscious of that, that that happens to us. Wait now, I'll come back over and say hi, bye in the comment section, because we're sure up to the hour now. And... Let's run back. Um, let's run back from here and give you Dick Cheney one more time. Because you have to look at this stuff. You have to understand. And this is hard to look at, I know, coming up. But you have to do the right thing and look at it. You have to do that, folks, to understand what's coming. What low level radioactive material will do. Because you have to fight back. You have to stand your ground now. 
you have to hold people accountable. You have to use your voices. You have to make your stand. This is our last stand. This is humanity's last stand. We are facing a extinction level event for the entire Pacific right away. Within two years, everything will be dead in it because it leaves no oxygen behind. The radiation, if you took one of those isotopes and put it in a big swimming pool, like the ocean, and I'll, I'll come back over to the comment section, anywhere in the ocean, normally you could go down and anywhere in the ocean, take out a little drop, put it on a petri dish or a little piece of glass, put it on a microscope, and there's millions of lives. And you can take a swimming pool of that stuff and put an isotope in it, and it'll fry them, everything in it. So imagine what an ocean full of that stuff is going to do. There's no oxygen left behind. The plankton, the protoplankton's got nothing to eat. And it will fry them too because they're small, see? And they make the oxygen. And so we got a real problem. we got to deal with this. So I'll come over and say uh, good boy. We'll run down the list. Uh, one hour exactly. That's enough uh, for everybody. I'm going to have to consider doing a daytime show, I guess for the other side of the planet because they can't stay up all night and watch this stuff. Hi, Nubu Magic. We'll see you uh, tomorrow night. I'm going to catch your comments. Everybody's in, uh, because Nubu leaves lots of good ones there. It's like Radchick last night. She left lots of good ones. Miss Milky. Um, so we got Nubu Magic, Annabeck, Third Watch, Lorena Roll, Lunar, Nuts for Art, Big Now TV, Freelance Ryan, uh, Sylvia, pop, pop in your good boys. I'll say goodbye when I come back up, but folks. I'm just going to run down and say hi to a whole bunch of people. Logman, Hammond, Albert, Christopher, Evil, Knievel, Evil News. You slipped away so fast I can't find you. Uh, I'll read all your comments after. Zigfry, Tommy Cockroach. He's got a new song here, folks. Uh, that's worded, okay? And go contribute to him. He's looking, he wants to get it up on iTunes. Logman, there's, oh, so many people here, I can't possibly keep up with it. Uh, but I'm gonna try it. Roto, Jerry, I say Miss Milky again. Uh, shoo, shoo, shoo. Can't keep up with it. Ninth Wave, Ligo Go Get, Go Get Tattoo. Uh, Starlight, it's hard. Uh, nuts for art. I'll just spend a few minutes saying hi to people. James Wong. Andrew. Uh, come back down. Ricky Sticky. Yeah, I can't keep up with it. It just keeps jumping every time I try to. Every time I try to grab a bunch of names, names it jump, jumps on me. I'll find a way around that in the next few days. <coughs> Once again, folks, low-level radiation. I put another link below um, about low-level radiation. Miss Milky actually put a link there. I'll find that, track that down. I'll pop that underneath it too. I'll go watch it. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow night. And because this is an ongoing everyday thing now, I got to come up with new stuff each day. Or, you know, I'm not useful, right? So, I'll, no, I guess I'm useful because we got a platform, but... I don't feel useful unless I can come up with something new every day. And that's a lot of work just to do that little stuff I've done tonight here. That was a lot of work. That takes all day. That wore me out. And, and I had to take a nap. Then I was good to go again. Just like a little bit of more light. And so in the more light, we're coming back. Uh, we'll be back a little earlier. We'll try to get the times in a little earlier. And I'll consider doing the second show a day soon for the other side of the planet. Because they need to know too. And I don't know how I'm going to do that one. But I'm going to try anyway. We'll see you in the more light, folks. Uh, probably a half an hour, an hour earlier. Take care.